Miss Meadow, it's like Exhibit A <laughs> in my mystery, in my case, but I feel it's the the biggest smoke screen so far because it just looks like, it says for bravery in the field. It's like, whatever, do you know what I mean? It's just, you're a soldier. But actually, this is a really big deal. Trevor was able to tell me some things about what he did to get it, but I would like to know more specifically because Again, I have a story in my head, and I'd like to know the facts. Tom Darling was 24 when he went to war. He left behind his two young children, Mary, aged two, and one-year-old Tom, and his pregnant wife, Margaret. In May 1940, Tom was serving as a dispatch rider between battalion headquarters in Violaine and La Basse, where the Camerons were trying to stop a 300-strong tank division led by Rommel from crossing the canal and reaching Dunkirk. Alan's come here to meet historian David French. I brought you here because this is really where your grandfather wins his medal. Three rifle companies of the first Cameron Highlanders are holding La Basse against the Germans. The headquarters of, of the battalion, which is where your grandfather was based, is up there at Wallen. Romwell has got his tanks across the canal, and by about half past two on the afternoon of the 27th, they are rolling across these fields. There are about 300 of them. And this is perfect tank country. It's flat, there is no cover. Your grandfather was a dispatch rider, mm -hmm. which meant it was his job normally to carry messages from battalion headquarters to the forward company. Mm -hmm. But he does something else that afternoon, which is really absolutely extraordinary. What I've got here is the war diary of your grandfather's battalion. The forward companies were supplied with ammunition, and in one case with a Bren gun, by the work of 298278 Lance Corporal T. Darling, who on his motorcycle and laden with ammunition boxes and other necessities for the companies in La Basse, made repeated journeys from Boilen to La Basse along the fire-swept road. Wow. For his gallantry and devoted conduct, Lance Corporal Darling was recommended for and later awarded the military medal. Right. That is probably the road he drove down. As you can see, there is absolutely no cover there whatsoever. He is a bit like a duck in a shooting gallery. Wow. He is an incredibly lucky guy. And he's got guy. loads of boxes of ammunition he's on his bike. He's got loads of boxes of ammunition. Um, had a bullet hit one of those boxes of ammunition, wow. then he would have probably gone up like a Roman candle. He's carrying ammunition to... to the rifle companies, actually, in La Basse, who are doing the fighting. It's not his normal job. Um, oh. His normal job would just be to carry messages backwards and forwards. What also we've got here is the official citation, which explains why he was given the medal. Lance Corporal Darling took forward on a motorcycle two Bren guns and a supply of ammunition as reinforcement. He carried out this hazardous and difficult operation under mortar and machine gun fire. Whoa! It is like the Commando comics. <laughs> mein Gott, got in Himmel, I say. Well, he's reckless then. He's reckless. I think he's also, I think he's driven by perhaps two things. What one is he's a regular soldier, mm -hmm. and the one thing that's drummed into regular soldiers is you obey orders. So you know, he's been told to do this, and it would automatically be that he would do it. The other thing is perhaps much more important than that. He has been in this battalion for six or seven years. So he's not just going to the help of comrades, he's going to the help of people who are his friends. He will know most of those guys by name. He can't let them down. Mm. Um, he wouldn't be able to look himself in the face in the morning when he shaved. Despite the desperate efforts of the Camerons, German tanks quickly advanced on their positions. The regiment was split in two. More than three quarters of them were trapped in La Basse, where they were killed, captured, or went missing. Tom was one of the few who were left at battalion headquarters in Violaine. They retreated and were eventually evacuated from Dunkirk. It's a very, very nasty experience, that retreat. As you think of the situation he's in, he knows the army has been beaten. 
He's very, very tired. But above all, it's probably a terrible psychological burden he's carrying with him, yeah, because sure. he's left behind most of his oh, mates in the they're battalion. Trapped in the they're either trapped or they're dead. Oof. And he's probably wondering, why me? Why did I get lucky? Of the original 800 Cameron Highlanders in France, only 79 answered the roll call when they returned to Britain. He's 24 years old, and he's got a family at home. He's got this family of soldiers who he is trying to, you know, keep alive. But of course, at the same time, it's very glamorous what he's doing. He's coming through billowing smoke on a motorbike. He's Steve McQueen. But I think in terms of what I'm trying to get to, which is ultimately find out what were the circumstances towards the end of his life, the, I, the amount of trauma and pain and the loss of family, again, this thing about family that he must have suffered on that day, I definitely think it's going to contribute to the end of the story. <laughs>